Kahala Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, Bashim Rakwak Radash, double honors to my teachers, the apostles of Great Millstone, peace and mercy to the elect who are the house of David reborn again, and shalom to the one third of Yasharala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, who before losing their true heritage were known as the Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, I'm going to touch upon two of the primary characters in the Bible that your church will not teach you completely about. That would be Esau and Jacob, as you see them uh, pictured here. Now, Esau and Jacob were the twin sons of Isaac and Rebekah. Let's go ahead and uh, look at who they were in the biblical timeline. They're at the very top here, pretty much at the very beginning. They came into, into existence circa 1700 BC. This is when historic records show that they came around, basically around the time that, that the Hammurabi laws in, in uh, these two here, Jacob and Esau, create the last two nations of the 18 nations in this world. Right? They create the 17th and the 18th nation. Now, Jacob and Esau were the twin sons of Isaac. Now, Isaac received the blessing from Abraham. Now, when you get into who these men were, uh, Jacob, he would be the forefather of the people who you would know today as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians. Jacob's name was changed to Israel, which in the proper Hebrew tongue, known as Paleo-Hebrew, you would pronounce Yasharala. Yasharala means he prince power, or he is the prince of power, or basically saying he's God's son. Now, Jacob's name, like I said, was changed to Israel's, and Israel had four wives. This graphic here breaks down how these 12 tribes, from the Somali Indians, the Dominican Republicans, the Haitians, the Negroes, the Mexicans, the Salvadorians, Salvadorians all the way to the Colombians, the North American Indians, the uh, Brazilians, the Venezuelans, the Cubans, the Puerto Ricans, the Jamaicans, the Chileans, all the way to the Argentinians, all came from these four women, Leah, Zipla, Rebecca, and Biha. Now, when you get into the line of Esau, Esau, he is a very cunning person. His whole line has always been, and they've always worked at hiding themselves, but the Lord made sure to preserve enough of their records so that way we could track who they are today and he did this through prophecy and also by preserving uh, certain uh, historic um, records now Esau for the most part through historic records created by these Caucasians direct you know themselves you could trace their lineage back to uh, to Rome and again the Romans descend from Esau as their uh, you know ancient forefather this is why they they uh, they venerate the, the the eagle which was a symbol of, of Esau now just as I mentioned the 12 tribes of Jacob Esau also has multiple tribes within his descendants as far as the individual breakdown that is unknown because of the destruction of the uh, of, of the Caucasians tribal uh, records or who they go back to all of them that is however we do know that the men of Timon would be the people that you would know today as the Germans so for example Donald Trump he him along with the King of England known as Prince Philip along with uh, along with uh, these guys here they are all Germans right they would be considered men of Timon 
We also understand and know and have proven through records and, and historic documents and through prophecy that the people who you would call today the so-called Jews or the self-proclaimed Jews of today who, who through their own records have, have shown that they were uh, religious converts circa 700 AD these people here would be known as Amalekites. They are of the top tribe of Edom. Esau's first wife gave Eli uh, uh, bore Eliphaz. Eliphaz married Tima, and Tima had Amalek. Now let's go and read uh, Amalek's uh, about Amalek in the scripture. This is Exodus 17 and 14. Now Amalek. He, they were the first nation to come up against uh, uh, um, against Israel when we had made the exit out of Egypt. Egypt just to give you an idea how, how wicked these, these bastards were. This is Exodus 17 and 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, and Moses built an altar and called the name of it Hawanisi, for he said, Because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. And that's right, because the Lord's adversaries are these devils, you know, these people who rule the world in wickedness, has everybody mo moaning, including all the animals and the trees and everything, have destroyed this world, man. The, the Lord has is, has declared war on these people, man. And, but it, and these people have done the same. They, they actually follow Lucifer. And you don't have to take my word for it. Let's go ahead and read one of their uh, um, top citizens, right? Harold Wallace Rosenthal, right? A big, uh, a big wig in the Amalekite UN political uh, infrastructure, man. He says right here, most Jews, or I'm going to fix it, most Amalekites do not like to admit it, but our God is Lucifer, and we are his chosen people. And damn straight, man. See, because uh, Harold here knows his line goes back to Esau, and he knows that Esau would be considered the seed line of Satan. Right? He, he is the physical manifestation on earth of the devil, just as Jacob and his descendants, the Negro, Latinos, Native Indians, are the physical manifestation of the Lord here on earth and we should be in rulership now we should be leading this world in righteousness but because the devil is in in, in, in control right because this the, the devil is has control over the earth right now this is why this is hell this is why his seed line is ruling right but that's soon about to come to an end as with all the things you started seeing happen the crazy storms earthquakes the rumors of wars submarines going down all these type of things man but uh let's go ahead and get on to the story of jacob and esau let's 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 find out who they were in the bible let's get their story so but before i do that i want to explain to you how jacob and esau from the very beginning even before they were born they were they were destined to to be at odds with each other, to always be uh, at war with each other. This goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden, and you can read about this in Genesis 3 and 15. And actually, let me start at 3 and 14. And Yahweh, Bahashem Yahushai, our power, said unto the serpent. The serpent is not a physical snake, by the way. It, it would be the the uh, forefathers or the progenitor of, of what you would know as Cain and eventually the Edomites but back then this is Esau or Cain before he had lost his melanin these are just he was a tricky ass sneaky person back then right and God said unto the serpent because thou hast done this thou art cursed above all cattle above every beast of the field upon thy belly shalt thou go and dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. We know uh, snakes don't eat dust, man. What this means is that 
that these Edomites uh, throughout their existence here on Earth are going to go through through existence in confusion, man. They're not going to know their power. They're not going to know that there is a God that exists. This is why to today they're they're all fairly much uh, atheists. However, a lot of them believe in uh, in Satan. So you see, they're, they they they've eaten up confusion, man. They're sitting in a low place mentally, right? Spiritually too. Let's continue, verse fifteen. And I will put enmity between the between thee and the woman the woman being israel right because since back then the lord knew that he was he was he was perfectly uh cultivating a seed line that in the end he would marry to his to his his only begotten son right that woman being israel who he like like it tells you the scriptures who he likens onto a comely woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And what does that mean? When you go back to uh, to uh, um, let's get this. This is Second Ezra's six and here. This is Second Ezra's six, and I'm gonna start at eight. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. The hand of a man is betwixt the hill and the hand. The other question, Ezra's asked thou not. Basically, that just means that, uh, you see, the hand. Let me actually go back to here and stuff. So this is what they're talking about, because then I'm going to read in a bit. Jacob's he took Esau's foot and this right here was a physical action which would later manifest into what would happen down the future where Esau would be the last reigning heathen nation and then after that reign or that age when he, his time of rulership would be up Jacob would then begin the, the new age and the new rulership where the Lord is here on earth ruling and we're ruling uh, along with him, right? That's what that means. Now, let me go ahead and read this other version of the Bible, which kind of explains it a little better. This is the uh, uh, GNB. I think it's the, uh, that's the Geneva Bible and stuff. But it says here, Esau, rep this is uh, six to nine. Esau represents the end of the age. Age being the end of this current uh, period of, of, of humanity, right? Because again, at the end of the world, when the Lord returns, that's going to be the end of this current cycle. Then the Lord is going to reset humanity again, and it's we're going to start over again, but in rightful rulership. Esau represents the end of this age, and Jacob represents the beginning of the new age. So if Jacob's hand is the beginning, and Esau's heel is the end, do not try to find space in between. Right? Because there's going to be no uh, <laughs> no waiting period, man. No buffering time, man. It's going to go right, Esau's kingdom is going to go right down, and Jacob's kingdom is going to be established. Jacob's kingdom being the Lord's kingdom, that's going to be established right after, man. So let's go ahead and uh, and see this. So that's what this means, man. That the Lord was going to put enmity between our two seeds from the very beginning. Which means we would always be at odds with each other, man. We would always see each other as the enemy. And yeah, there's some exceptions to the rules. There are some, there are some uh, what you would consider white people who are friends with black people and vice versa black people friends with white people and latinos friends with whites and whites friends with latinos and and it's all mixed together man there's always exceptions man but i'm gonna tell you here's some of the reasonings before that sometimes there's gonna be tears man there's gonna be some negroes out there whose lineage whose father's lineage goes back to a so-called white man right these are those those awkward uh, uh, Negroes, those awkward Latinos, those awkward Indians, the ones who don't have that same spirit, and vice versa, man. You got those those so-called white people, man. Those ones who just they got that flavor, they got that that style. They're able to spit lyrics. They're able to 
you know, get down with the homies, man. They're they're cross they're cross people, man. Their their father's lineage all the way back probably goes back to a so-called Negro Latino Native Indian, right? Making them a confusion of face, right? So again, this isn't a black and white thing, man. This is a, a good versus evil seed thing, man, right? And and but this ultimately is that enmity that the Lord has put in between us. This is Luke 16 and 26. Actually, it says, And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. And this right here was a parable of Lazarus and, and the rich man, man that the Lord gave out, explaining how the nation of, of Israel and Edom, that the Lord has set a great gulf in between these two people, man. This is why we could get together, let's say in the best conditions, man. We could be chilling and partying together, but what, what happens? You have a group of Latinos over here kicking it with the Negroes and the Indians, and then you have a group of, of Caucasians over here just kicking it, talking to each other, we don't like the same music. We don't vibe like right. We don't. We don't think the same things are funny. That's that great golf fix, man. And like I said again, you will have exceptions. You will have somebody who's a little interested in the other. But again, that's the exception and not the rule, right? So next, let's go ahead and um, get into the story of, uh, of Jacob and Esau. So Salaki, I, I wanted to try, try to explain all that. Before I get into the story, so we're going to go ahead and read the whole story of Jacob and Esau from the first time you hear about them in the Bible. This is explained in Genesis 25 and 20. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethua, the Syrian of Pandanaram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. Now, here, these Syrians, by the way, are, are Assyrian, are Assyrians, right? When it that that famous scripture that says thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, that a lot of these wacky Christians like to use, saying, "Oh, you shouldn't hate Edomites." That that scripture there really should say Syrians, because the Syri we were as it shows, tells you here in the scripture, we messed with the Syrians, man. But let me continue, verse twenty one. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him and Rebekah his wife conceived right and the children struggled together with her within her and she said if it be so why am I thus and she went to inquire of the Lord right because inside man they, they were they were kicking and, and struggling in there and she knew that 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 Isaac was a was a godly man man she knew that he he from him he was a great man that the Lord was dealing with, man. Right? So that's why she she didn't understand that if, if this man here was so holy, so so uh, important, how could could she be having so many problems that uh, that the, or, that the Lord is plaguing her with uh, with this with all with these kids uh, fighting, you know, in her? And actually, she probably didn't even know she had uh, twins, right? But what happened? It tells you here, verse twenty-two. And the children struggled together, and the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Right? So the Lord had told her that there were going to be two nations, man. And, and you know, and finally, and there weren't no ultrasounds, no x-rays. Right? So she got this. And it was confirmed when they were born. She seen that there was twins, right? That's what it said. Behold, there were twins in, in, her, in her womb. Right? That prophecy was confirmed. Verse 25. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment and they called his name Esau 
Now Esau in the Hebrew uh, means wasted away as he, right? Because when he came out, because you got to remember, at this time, everybody on the planet Earth was of, of a color, right? Everybody was melanated to a certain degree or another. So when this baby came out, he came out red, right? He had no melon. So these, it, you know, it, it freaked, these, freaked them out. So that's why they, they gave him that, that, that name. They call him Wasted Away because his skin was... <clears throat> looked like it had been wasted away right you could see forth his, his, his you could see the blood in, in his in his skin just like today with the Caucasian babies you could see a lot of you could see their skin when they're born right you see how red it is and they come out uh, a, a bit hairy too because that hair that mostly every ba baby is born with it's more it's it's more apparent on on Caucasians right and also they tend to just be a bit more hairier in general now verse 26 and after this came out his came his brother out and his hand took hold of Esau's heel and his name was called Jacob Jacob meaning Yaquav or to usurp right basically meaning to to, to get over on somebody right to be a, a cunning on some over somebody and Isaac was three score years uh, old when uh, when when she Salaki and Isaac was three score years old when she bare them right so he was 60 right so and the boys grew <clears throat> and Esau was was a cunning hunter a man of the field and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents and and when you get into the word plain that means complete full beautiful right that's what plain meant back you know that, verse 28 and Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison venison being deer and stuff uh, but Rebekah loved Jacob and Jacob sought pottage and Esau came from the field and he was faint now here is the very first time where Esau gives not only because Esau loses birth his birthright and his blessing to Jacob, right? And right here is where Esau is going to lose his birthright because he's going to sell it, you know? And But again, this was all ordained through the Spirit, right? Because the Lord had told uh, uh, Rebekah that the, that the elder was going to serve the younger. So she knew that this was going to happen, right? This is, so let's read this. Verse 30, And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with the same bread pottage right pottage is a meat stew by the way right that's what that's what pottage is it's not just soup it's pottage refers to meat that when you put soup when you put meat in it right or um, for I am faint therefore was his name called Edom right so basically because uh, that 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 pottage that uh, wasn't fully cooked yet man that's why the look this is why uh Edom right there this is why Esau's name was changed to Edom right because he had he had uh, partook of that bloody uh, pottage man because he had you know forsaken the rules of not eating the blood of blood and, and meat and, and the food that is right this is why till today you have Edomites who they have a spiritual mark on them that they love raw meat Right. This is uh, this is just what they do, man. This is they're they're into raw meat, you know. When you get into uh, when you ask people like how they how they like their steak, if they're Caucasians, they're gonna tell you they like it raw, right? They 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 revel in eating raw meat, like, and this isn't just a small thing. This is this is what they freaking do, right? They even get off on on uh, on it sexually, man. There's there's videos of these uh, Edomite women that that will eat raw meat while they're uh, <clears throat> in their panties, man. And, and supposedly that shit's sexy to them, man. It looks nasty, but look at this, man. You know that's just a spiritual marker of Esau, man. That's how you know 
these Caucasians are 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 descendants. Of, that's a spiritual marker that shows these Caucasians are are descendants of of Esau. So let's go and go on. And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau or Salaki. And Jacob said, "Sell me this day thy birthright." Right. So before, and Jacob seeing that Esau wanted that 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 pottage, man, he he seen his opportunity, and he took it, man, and he jumped on it, and he asked Esau. To sell him his birthright. And what did Esau say? And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? Right? See, because earth because Esau, man, he didn't care about this birthright, man. And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. And Esau despised his birthright, you see? So there you go, man. So, so now let's go ahead and, so now that we've shown how Esau sold his birthright, let's go ahead and see how Yaquab, uh, Jacob, obtained Esau's uh, blessing, right? So this is, this is told in Genesis 27. So I'm just going to read the whole thing. This is Genesis 27 and 1. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son and said unto him, My son. And he said unto him, Behold, I am here. And he said, Behold, now I am old, and I know not the days of my I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapon thy quiver and thy bow and go out to the field and take me some venison and make me savory meat so so as I love and bring it to me that I may eat and my soul may bless thee before I die and Rebekah heard that Isaac spake to Esau his son and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it and Rebekah spoke unto Jacob her son saying behold I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, saying, and you see, right here, the Lord had made sure that that Rebekah, uh, 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 Isaac's wife, had heard this, and 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 because remember, Rebekah knew that Jacob was supposed to be the one who received the blessing, that he that he would be the, he would have to be the one on top, right? So this is why she did what she did to make sure that. That Jacob got the blessing and not Esau, because she was fulfilling the, the will of the Lord. And just like the Lord had used women in the past, you got you got the story of of of, uh, um, of uh, um, Judith. You got the story of Deborah. The Lord also used Rebecca here to fulfill the uh, uh, Jacob, or uh, the forefather of Negroes, Latinos, Native Indians, to get the blessing of the so-called Caucasian. To, to gain that everlasting uh, salvation. And again, this was ordained from way before they were even born, right? But this is just the way it had to play out here on, on the carnal level. Let's continue. Verse 7. Bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before my death. N now, therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids, kids being uh, small goats, of the of the goats, and I will make them savory meats for thy father, um, such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said. To Rebekah, his mother, behold, Esau, is, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father, uh, peradventure, will fill me, and and shall seem to him as a, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall, I shall bring a curse upon me, and not a blessing. And his mother, <clears throat> his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice and go fetch me them. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother. And his mother made savory meat, such as his father loved. 
and Rebecca goodly took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau which were with her in the house and put them upon Jacob her younger son and she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck and and she gave the savory meat and the bread and which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob and he came unto his father and said my father and he said here am I who art thou my son and Jacob said unto his father I am Esau thy firstborn I have done according to thy to thou biddest me arise I pray thee sit and eat of my venison and and thy soul may bless me and Isaac said unto my his son how is it that thou hast found it so quickly my son and he said because the Lord thy God brought it to me and Isaac said unto Jacob come near I pray thee that I may fill thee my son whether thou be my very son Esau or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him, and said, and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy, and his brother's Esau's hands, so he, as his Esau's brother's hands, so he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat. He brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelt the smell of his raiment, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of the field which the Lord hath blessed. Therefore God gave thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed, every one, cursed be every one that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet uh, scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from hunting. So you see at this point here, Jacob, he he had now taken the blessing, which which Isaac was going to give to Esau, man. But you see, this was all done through the Spirit, right? See, the Lord had made maneuvers so that way Jacob got the the rightful blessing and not Esau. But let's go ahead and find out what happened with Esau. And he, and and as also had made safe. And he also had made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father, Let my face arise and eat of his son's venison, that thou so may bless me. And Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that hath taken venison and brought it to me? And I have eaten all before thou camest, and have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. Right? And see, even Isaac was shook up here, man. See, because he, he found out he got tricked. Right? And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceedingly bitter cry, and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. Right? Because Esau here realized that he, he, he got screwed, man. He was is, is uh he was done for man that blessing that he was hoping to get because he probably knew he was gonna rule the world and he was gonna get everlasting salvation he knew that was gone right let's continue and he said thy brother came with subtility and hath taken away thy blessing and he said 
is not his name. Is not he rightly named Jacob? And again, Jacob, Yaquab means to usurp, right? Uh, for he hath supplanted me these two times. See, and the two times he was talking about is when he, when, see, and, and Esau was a damn liar here, right? Because he actually sold his birthright. And right here, Jacob did actually uh, yikwab his ass out of that, that blessing. But again, that was all ordained through the Lord because this is the way the Lord wanted it. He, um, he supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. And he said, Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Right? And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. And by the sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck and Esau hated Jacob uh, because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him and Esau said in his heart the days of mourning for my father are at, at, are at hand then will I slay my brother Jacob and with these words of Esau his el her and these words of Esau her elder son were told to Rebekah and she went and called Jacob her younger son and she said unto him behold thy brother Esau as touching thee doth com comfort himself proposing to kill thee now therefore my son obey my voice and arise thee thou flee thou to Laban my brother in Haran and tarry with him a few days until thy brother's fury turn away until thy brother's anger turn away from thee and he forget that which thou hast done to him then I will send and fetch thee from thence why should I be deprived also of you both in one day and Rebecca said to Isaac I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth if Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth uh, such as, as these which are of the daughters of the land which God shall which good shall my life do to me and basically the daughters of Heth were the were the, uh, the Africans the, uh, the Phoenicians and stuff at that time so, Lord, so Rebecca didn't want uh, Jacob to marry uh, into another nation she wanted him to marry into to, uh, the nation of the Hebrews now back to Esau's blessings man. let's take a look at this right so these blessings here basically kind of explain uh, Esau's spiritual markers today, man, right? He's going to live on the fatness of the earth, man. He's going to be extremely rich and going to have all the nicest place on the earth. And how is he going to do it? He's going to, because he's going to live by the sword, right? And and we know that uh, that Esau's blessing is his weaponry, man. This guy lives and dies to, to, to hunt and to and to shoot <laughs> this guy's a that's all this guy freaking does man he he loves his weapons right this is just and he's been like this throughout history man his eagles and his weapons you know that's Esau's mo man he's been uh, a, a warrior and again the sword means basically just weapon it doesn't mean that he's gonna that Esau is gonna be the, the the mall ninja down the street that has that samurai sword and shit, man. No, Esau is throughout time is always gonna be the person who who excels in weaponry, man. Who has conquered the world, right? And just as every nation has had a chance to rule the the Caucasian race or the nation of Edom or um, Adawam. This is the last rulership of the heathen nation, as I mentioned before. 
right? So, and 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 what has Esau done with with all that uh, rulership, man? Has has he ruled the world righteously? No. He has done what his his forefather had proclaimed, man. He has hated uh, Jacob in his heart, man. This is why you always see the Negro, Latinos, and Native Indians being shot down and oppressed. You don't see the Chinese, the Japanese coming over here getting shot down because they're reaching for their wallets, things like that. No, that doesn't happen, right? But it tells you here in Ezekiel 35 and 5, it says, Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in thy in the time of their calamity, in the time of their iniquity, had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith Yahweh, Bashim al our power, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Uh, Sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Thus will I make Mount Seir. Mount Seir, by the way, is one of Esau's first uh, uh, towns that he inhabited in the land which was given to him. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate. And again, mountains represents government. So he's saying, I'm going to make the government of Esau most desolate, and I will cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth and I will fill his mountains with his slain men in thy hills and in thy valleys and in all thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword <coughs> and what's going to happen to Jacob in these end times this is Lamentations 4 and 22 the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished O daughter of Zion Zion meaning monument, right? Because we are the monument of the Lord. This represents Israel. O daughter of Zion, he will not carry, he will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquities. O daughter of Edom, he will discover thy sins, right? So you see, uh, Jacob's uh, punishment is over, and Esau's, uh, Esau's uh, is going to start getting the the curses that were once on us and and this is again told again in Matthew 25 and 33 and he shall set the sheep on his right hand Israel represents the sheep right on his right hand but the goats on his left and and then shall the king say unto them on his right hand come ye blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world Right, so there you go. So, hopefully, Akim, uh, you you uh, brothers were edified. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to this uh, poster of Esau and Jacob, right? Which is like the proper depictions of what they would look like. You know, again, this is a bit of artistic uh, um, uh, uh, flair on this man. You know, and obviously this isn't a picture of them, but this is what they would look like, hunters and. You know white and black but uh so again hope you enjoy it hopefully this video was edifying but i want to go and give all praises to yahweh bashem yahushai bashem double honors to my teachers the apostles of great millstone peace and mercy to the elect shalom